I'm your host, Ryan Austin Dennis, and this is Black Life. Today, I'm with Adrian Octavius Walker at Part Two Gallery in downtown Oakland, a day before the opening of the Represented Group exhibition, where he will be exhibiting new print work. Adrian Octavius Walker is a mixed media artist based in Chicago, Illinois, by way of St. Louis. His work is inspired by the Black body, dynamics of the Black family, and archival work related to the African American experience and the untold stories they share. Working both in film and digital fo format photography, Walker creates penetrating portraits influenced by his deep awareness of the nuances that pervade the, the human experience. In 2015, Walker self-published the book, My Lens, R. Ferguson, a documentation of protests against police brutality after the death of Michael Brown in Ferguson. The book was shortlisted for the Paris Photo Aperture First Photo Book Award and selected images were featured in a solo exhibition at the University of Alabama and five group exhibitions internationally. His greatest milestone to date is being one of the prize winning artists in the Outwin 2019 American Portraiture Today competition, which was on display at the National Portrait Gallery Smithsonian in Washington, DC. He's done commissioned work for Apple, Nike, Levi's, Google, and Time Magazine. Thinking about what it means to get what you need as an artist during our time, we chat about his transition to freelance work his creative practice and how it's evolved and how he places himself within the art canon. I think I want to start off first with like, yeah, with like, what was your 2019 like? Uh, 2019 was a ride. It's just like a bunch of things happened in 2019. The biggest thing was like us leaving Oakland mm -hmm. at the end of 2019. Yeah. But that year was the outwin, I guess. That was the first, that was the year where I shot my first big album cover. That was for Kamaya, two days before we left Oakland. It was stacking, like just like- Yeah, just like... so it was two days right before I left Oakland. And um, yeah, I don't really remember a lot yeah. of what was really happening. Around that time. Because and... everything just, happens you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. things just kind of like i wish i kind of like sat down and like really just had time to like really see what's going on mm -hmm. and how it's like moving versus and just like moving from thing to thing have you ever like have you just like, just like a diary just like i just started writing more down i'm writing stuff down more yeah. Like most like recently, yeah, hone yourself and hone myself in yeah. and like stuff like that, yeah. And I do this like this meditation or this oath of manifestation every day, mm -hmm. where I read and post it. And that kind of gives me time to myself and like really like that's one thing that I have to do that and like working out, mm -hmm. like actually working out like my body and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, 2019 was I, I feel like it was just a solid year. It was also like a transition of me in my role at my last job where I was just kind of like doing more work. Like, I feel like it was like fulfilling my practice and what I was to, I guess, becoming of as a marketing, yeah. a marketer or whatnot in the tech world. But yeah, <laughs> all that kind of like disappeared, disappeared. 2020, yeah. you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Yeah. And like before that, I do want to, I do want to kind of highlight what makes that one's so amazing because I know I have a, a really great stat actually about that. Mm -hmm. It's like so like the photo the photograph was like uh, the Black Virgin Mary, mm -hmm. and it was selected from an entry pool of more than two thousand six hundred entries, which were then narrowed down to forty seven finalists. And of those finalists, only seven artists were chosen as prize winners and committed artists. And your work was honored with a committed award. So mm -hmm. it's just like yeah. That's a huge pull. It was a huge yes. Wow. And then it's like Amy Sherrill was the one who um, presented our awards because she won the same award years ago. Um, and then she was also honored to paint Michelle Obama for the uh, National Portrait Gallery. Which is one of the best portraits ever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, all her work is really, really great. Yeah. You know, so. And one of your favorites, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> and then it's also like, so that was wild because Kehinde Wiley's painting mm -hmm. of Obama is there still too. And it was like two rooms away from my, so yeah, 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 yeah. from We Matter, uh, from Black Virgin Mary. Yeah. So that was pretty wild to like take in. So, I mean, that was, uh, I, I, it's weird that it was in 2019. I thought it was in 2018. 
I don't know. It happened so fast. Yeah, it happened so fast. So the fact that that happened and, you know, got to go to D.C. It's my first time at the Smithsonian. That was an honor. And I got to meet a lot of great artists and stuff like that as well. A lot of my friends and family came. So that was like an honor, too, to be in that space. And now it's just like touring around. It's another whole thing. I was asked to submit again. I just didn't have the time. And I didn't know what I wanted to submit either. So, yeah. 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 But yeah, so moving from like 2019 to 2020, I just want to know what was your pandemic like? At the end of 2019, December 23rd, 2019 was us leaving my family. We moved to Chicago. We went on vacation in January for my wife's birthday to Mexico City. That was great. We had a blast. And I remember February rolled around. I was transitioning, getting everything together at Visco in Chicago at the Hoxton where we worked out of. And then I had a gig that came up where I had to go to Detroit yeah. for Airbnb. And that was a whole thing yeah. because <laughs> yeah. COVID was happening. Yeah. And that's when nobody, that's when black people couldn't get it. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> drink, drink some uh, ginger ale, we'll be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jokes on us. Yeah. And that happened, it was crazy because around that time I was super sick around that time. Yeah. It was wild. I'm not going to say I had COVID, yeah. but I was sick. You were sick, yeah. Um, so that happened. March rolled around, preparing for this show. Crazy. What's crazy is, what's crazy what? is the fact that this work behind us, which we'll get at, mm -hmm. this is where We Matter was. The yeah. same wall. This, um... <laughs> so Brock is wild. This is where the bathroom lived. Yeah. Um, so... Honestly, I'm dealing with a lot of divine moments and times and situations in my life. And so we were here building out We Matter, building out the bathroom. Yeah. Um, and days and time was going by as things were shutting down. And I was just like in my head, like, well, I'm gonna have to cancel this. Yeah. I'm gonna have to like say something. And I hit up Brock and I was just like, hey, I think we should call this show. I don't, because we would have had, Oakland was ready to come. This was me and Junebug yeah. in the same space. That's wild. You know what right. I'm saying? It would have been. And then yeah. in the front, we had the group show with like a bunch of folks, Chris Martin and a few others yeah. in the front. I was in this room and Junebug was in the back. Mm -hmm. And so Oakland would have showed up, definitely. Yeah, and it wouldn't have been good. Would, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I... The day of the show, I think it was that, no, I think it was the day before the show, that Friday or something like that. I think, yeah, the, 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 that Friday. Yeah. The show was Saturday, I believe. Damn. I think, I just flew out. I flew back home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I flew back home. It was sad because we just did everything. We spent a lot of time building out this bathroom. And, yeah, it was a beautiful show. I mean, yeah. The pictures, I, saw, I mean, you look at it, it's a beautiful It was show. wild. And I remember you talking about mm -hmm. you wanting to do that. And yeah. Like, with your work, you're always kind of expanding and moving your practice into installation work. And I love that you often call yourself a mixed media artist. And to that point, I want to kind of reflect a little, go back a little bit. And I think like, because you study sociology. Study sociology, And I yeah. feel like that's, that kind of cross-disciplinary work mm -hmm. is something that is just kind of evolving out of you. Right, yeah. Because like, I struggle a lot with titles mm -hmm. and calling myself certain things. And we'll get to that closer yeah. to the end of this because it would make sense it once I get sense, there. Yeah. But like I, you know, but it started to make sense once I started to do more of that work. Some of the first installation work I did was here in the Bay in San Francisco yeah. uh, when I did the living room exhibition with my wife. You know, she helped put that together and we use archival footage or archival photos and a lot of archival things like the TV slash VCR combo stuff like that cassette uh vcr tapes and stuff like that because like, your eye is kind of trained towards again like i kind of like the nuances of like black family but i kind of like also that word family comes up a lot with you mm -hmm. and i kind of like could you kind of like talk about family yeah, like what is that yeah family to me is just people that come into my life where i just it's just a bond you know what i'm saying and it's kind of like 
this connection, something like is nothing is like left behind. It's just something's always there. And for some reason in my life, I have been coming across people that help me in so many different areas to where I feel like I can't let, let these people go. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like really being thoughtful and mindful of staying in contact with these people. You know what I'm saying? And just like, it's not like I just met you one time, you helped me with this and it's over. It's just like, I'm going to mention you every time. Like when I talk about me, uh, when I talk about We Matter, I talk about you. It's you and my friend, Ricky Bird. Like you were deeply, it was an inspired moment. Yeah, yeah. And I also had a team of individuals to help me with that. Jumba, Cameron Ritchie, Paul, um, Santana, yep. um, and uh, Santana Bellis, and Michael, the model, one of the models, like Paul and Michael were the models, but they were two people that were very helpful during this time, you know what I'm saying? So everybody had like some type of direction with the work, you know, putting it together. It was definitely like a whole thing. And then the language came about with you and working with my friend Ricky too. So it's just like a whole thing. And with like We Matter, it's, you, you were talking about, I do have a quote from you. And I, I think you were just trying to talk about this idea of looking at black masculinity in a different way. Yeah. And actually like, how do we like, and it's like, sometimes I feel like that word soften it does, is not even, that's not even the word. It's just like creating a lot more, for, I would like to use the word supple, mm -hmm. where it's just that nuance is there. Mm -hmm. Like they already pre-injected into it. Right. And like, and like I think with those photos, it's like you're allowing the black men in the photo. Yes, they look beautiful and amazing, right? Um, but they also, there's also the reference to like something much larger to themselves, the sculptural element and how we have to continuously kind of keep carving out new images. Mm -hmm. But the more and more I look at it, it's just like, you can be left alone, like wearing, like just leave me alone. It's yeah. another crazy thing is it's like, who's actually like buying the work? It's like white people are buying the work. Wait, 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 wait. And I had like somewhat of a beef with that, you know, and I had a many, many talks with different folks about who to allow to buy the work or like care to collect the work. And it's just like seeing like what type of meaning they come up with about the work or if they even care. Yeah. You know and, what I'm saying? And a little interested in that. Can we mm -hmm. talk a little bit about like, yeah. what was that? Like what were some of the meetings? I mean, uh, it, it's, it gets awkward. I had this one person that looked to buy some work for me in Chicago and I totally told him no. You know, because uh, he he just really, it, it didn't make any sense. I think it's mostly like for him, this particular person, obviously he has his money right. to spend. And then it's also, it's just kind of like looking at me and who I am and where I come from and my accomplishments. Mm -hmm. I think he's just seeing like a golden ticket to something in the future. There's something in the future, right? Yeah. Another, yeah. Know. I mean, that's the history of, I think, of uh, black art. Yeah. <laughs> Purchase black art mm -hmm. is, is like, yeah, you get the, the status of it. Mm. I own a lot of work, a lot of my friends work and stuff like that. And then just like people, uh, one piece I just acquired that is insane. It's an Emory Douglas piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I had to buy it because, you know, it's who we named our daughter after, right. mm -hmm. you know, and the fact that, you know, Oakland, mm -hmm. Black Panthers, it's just so much history to that. It's like, I had to have it. You know, it's just like, I knew I was going to get that piece or whatever. Once I like kind of put a stamp on it, it's just like no turning back. I didn't know how much it was going to cost, but that didn't stop me either. Cause I knew if I didn't get it, somebody else would have got it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What so, do you think of the barriers for people to buy work? The like, barriers? Like, like, like I feel but, like- I think it's all, it's money, bro. It's, just it's money. money. It's, it's just money. You gotta get, yeah. you gotta be comfortable with I know people who make, I know folks, black folks is rolling in though, mm -hmm. who won't even buy artwork. I, I can't force them to. I got yeah. motherfuckers that won't buy my work. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Friends, right. like right. close friends that I know they rolling in though. You know what I'm saying? But it's one of those things that's like, it's, I can't look at them and say, you don't value my work because you're not buying it. If I, if I knew me, I would buy my work. Personally, I I would literally buy. I'm like, I gotta, I have to have that. It's been times where I was like, should I buy my own artwork? Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, that may sound weird, but yeah, it's just yeah, like, yeah. should I buy it? Yeah. 
and because it comes back, it's like I'm paying for it. It's it's weird. Yeah. It's just weird. It's like that one piece that's floating around right now. Right. I battle with if I should sell that piece because it, it's literally one more left, and I'm like, I gotta keep that. Yeah. I have to. I have to own that well, yeah, that, work. that work. Right. I have to own that work because I want to pass it down to yeah. my family. You know what I'm saying? My daughter, and then she does do whatever she wants to do with it. But at the same time, that's a whole story, like to tell everybody. You know what I'm saying? She has no idea right now, but as she get older, it's just like my daddy was in the Smithsonian or something like that. This is the piece, and like you know, in here. This is the piece. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a talking piece or whatnot. But yeah, I think it's. I think it all boils down to money. Money, and it's just like certain things of what people value. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, and I value artwork, you know what I'm saying, and it's just like something that I have a home, I like to put it up on the walls, I want people to see it, and all this type of stuff, so that's kind of like how I look at it, and not. so, and it's not one of those things where it's just like, it's a lot of things that we can't afford, I stopped saying what I can, can't and cannot, can and cannot afford, yeah. I mean, because of the oath or whatnot, you know, I, and it's, it's just a part in the oath that said I can afford anything, yeah. I can afford anything I desire. And I desire art. Yeah. And so. then you like, and then my thing is you, your intention to get there, and then the art. Uh, to me, the art then magnetize. Then you get. Yeah, it magnetize. Yeah, and that. It comes towards you. Actually. Yeah, and money comes back. And it comes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You spend, you spend some. Right. And it comes back. You know what I'm saying? You win some, you lose some. Those type of quotes that everybody say. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Right. Yeah. So. Where are you in your creative process, actually? Right now? Yeah. Still figuring it out, still always. Figuring. I mean, even with you, you told me, hey, you should start photographing your family or get into still lives and stuff yeah. like that. So it's just like, I remember certain things that people tell me, and it's just like, the, my biggest thing is not having my camera on me at all times. Right. I just don't take it with me. I have this thing with carrying too much shit already. Yeah. So it's just like, carrying a camera all the time, everywhere I am. I'm not that type of per like that type of photograph. I mean, that, that type of uh, photographer yeah. to just. Sh but I'm missing out on moments. You know, I listen to people like Junebug and hear about his experience with missing moments and thinking, "Ah, oh, damn, this would have been a perfect time." And I know that feeling too. Mm -hmm. So it's just like now being more intentional with having my camera and stuff like that. Yeah. Not just when I have a gig; it's all the time. It's just me. I just need to get better at it. So. I feel like now I've come to turn, so it's just two parts of like my uh, way of working. I ended up having to hire a project manager mm -hmm. to help me with my doing. So it's like I'm getting better at structure mm -hmm. in my life as far as how I'm working on things being more efficient with that. Yeah. You're now, you're in a stage now where you are the studio. Right. And, you're and basically mm -hmm. you're managing the outlet right. of the work. Basically. Exactly. And I think that's, that that's an important transition. It is. And yeah. in terms of that, like, what does that mean? It, like, as, this, that's success. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it, a, it feels like it. Yeah, stuff. it definitely is. I mean, this was the year, we talking about 2020 now, where it's just like I lost a job mm -hmm. that was paying a nice amount. I was really used to getting paid every other week and just being insured and all that type of stuff. Just basically used to being taken care of. I felt like I was just security. Mm -hmm. But then that stopped. Yeah. I had to pivot and go into full-time art life and uh, transition to full-time like freelance, which was another success. I was getting job after job after job but this was the time of me getting big jobs big jobs, yeah. big jobs working with you had, I mean, it was google, time, twice, google twice i think time. google three times google three times yeah. time nike, uh, nike notra yeah. um who else apple, wired oh, wow. apple yeah. yeah so i i i got some really big stuff you know what i'm saying and it was just like definitely one of those things where it was uh it was time for those moments you know i didn't know you that ready. yeah but it <laughs> happened you know what yeah. i'm saying it definitely happened and does that i mean do you feel the validation 
Does that really I feel validation from anything I do. From yeah. all of everything I accomplish and end up doing and whatever it's like a validating but it's just basically why I have to keep going and make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Because right. like I never know what's going to happen. I speak it into existence and then that's all I that's all. You know what I'm saying? And then I just kinda like now I'm more mindful of these things happening because I also recently joined a uh, a group called Studio that helps with freelancers and keeping steady clients and stuff like yeah, that, yeah. clientele, mm -hmm. and doing a better job with staying in contact and up to date with yeah. stuff like that. So yeah, again, setting the bar, doing things to help me and my process, you know what I'm saying? Like taking that time out, even if I have to pay for it, mm -hmm. it's still going to double and it's more, more you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So what was like kind of like a your first what was like a hiccup moment for you? I'm always curious about people's hiccup moments when they first did the whole like real freelance thing. Like hiccup moment. Um that was like, oh uh, okay, well. My hiccup moment is always just being consistent and making sure that I'm uh, consistent and not just waiting to hear from people. Yeah. Okay. It's being more active of putting it out there, the word out there and the work out there. You know what I'm saying? So Excuse me, that's one of the forever hiccup moments of mine. Yeah. Um, another hiccup moment. I mean, having a family and just being there, present with them. I definitely just Obama that fly yeah. over to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe swatted that fly. <laughs> um, just being with family and making sure I'm just in tune with them. That's always a hiccup moment because I'm the person that's out and about all the time. Yeah. My wife is more of like a homebody and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, hiccup moments. A hiccup moment for me always is doing too much yeah. as well. Stretching you know what I'm saying? Out, Stretching myself too thin. Yeah, yeah, yep. Like, yeah. Just accepting calls all the damn time, meetings yeah. that didn't need to be but a it's meeting. Also part of your nature. I mean, you have to it is, like but now it's just like I had to tone it down. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I had to. You know, so I, I, and I did do that, you know? So those are the top three, I would say. Yeah. Yep. Um, speaking of your, this is your wife here, actually. This is Morgan. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is Morgan. Yeah, this work is actually, I photographed this in 2018. I just never turned really? it into photos. Yeah. And here it is, like, in the flesh of, like, well, turn it into, like, prints. And here it is, and it looks... What kind of Amazing. was this specifically? So this is printed on, I'm going to butcher the heck out of the name yeah. of the paper, so I'm not even going to try to say it. Yeah. It's a Japanese paper. Okay. Yeah, and it's just like a lot of textures inside of it. So it's just like you really get to see. It's like I want my work, when it lives on a type of paper, yeah. I want it to almost look as if like it's 3D. You can touch it in a way. Because I like sculptures and stuff like that. I like things that's like kind of like obviously made with hand. Mm -hmm. And so I want things to even look like it's like a painting almost. I didn't know that until I started seeing my work, but it looks like it can be like a painting or a drawing or something like that. Yeah. And I just like the papers and stuff like that till it, it, it brings out that yeah. for me. And I, and I'm looking at it, I see what you're saying. Yeah, just not afraid to spend the money to actually get things the way I want it to look. You know what I'm saying? So, which I, this is an addition to two. So I was like, damn, I may have to buy one of these photos. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, and it's not going to be a series. It's just like one of those things where I just kind of had these works and what it meant to me. The title of this work is called Equal Parts. When you think about equal parts in your favorite food or drinks and stuff like that and what makes it, yeah. you you love those two, two things or those things that make it. So it's just like thinking about equal parts in the person and the qualities of the person and what they are made of and what makes you love them and care for them and stuff like that. So it's just like, that's why I got equal parts, equal parts one and two. So, um so I know that you have a, a new position that you're going to be stepping into. <laughs> <laughs> the way you intro it is wild, because you <laughs> talked about 
we can keep all this in there. That's, per that's perfect. Because we talked about me just freelancing and stuff like that. Right. And so I accidentally stumbled across a job yeah. that I mm -hmm. applied for. A good friend of mine, Kiara Johnson, hit me with a crazy alley oop. And I am an official senior art director at Getty Images. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel? Like Oh man, I mean, I'm going back to work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You were like speaking of like. You know. So it's just kind of like one of those things that transitional mm -hmm. period of getting back into the swing of working, yeah, full like, time, yeah, for somebody else. But I'm not looking. I gotta change the way I talk about it. You know, what I'm saying I need right. to change the language. It's not force. It's just like, yeah, I'm working with a company, but at the same time, it's like I'm obviously there for a reason, and they wanted me for a reason. And I felt like I blew it out the water. Yeah. Also, from hearing what they said about me, and how they felt about me, and what they said about the other candidates, they said they didn't really talk about the other candidates as much. So, yeah. I don't really know. And this is the first time I've ever stepped in the foot in a position like this. Yeah. I went from marketing, I went from curating a writer, which ugh, I'm going to put that one back because I wasn't a writer, <laughs> to marketing and now art direction. Yeah. And I never really put two and two together that I've been art directing. You have been. Like, what, I, mean, I don't, that's your, the thing. I told you I struggle with titles. Yeah. Like that's what, whole, yeah. yeah. From the installation work to the curation, like mm -hmm. that's, you are that. Yeah. Like, I, like, I, Truly it makes that. sense. Yeah. So, but now it's like at Getty Images, which yeah. is kind of wild to say, but yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll get comfortable with saying it. I get comfortable with saying yeah, it. Yeah, soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, that's really great. So that's like another big. Like, that's another big thing. Yeah, it's just like all these big things yeah. keep happening, mm -hmm. and I'm not complaining, yeah. but at the same time, just um, just I'm gonna take care of business. Yeah. I know, I remember you have this quote and like, I know it was like a podcast mm. and you were talking about this idea of like winning and what winning and power is. Mm. And like, I kind of, I liked how you said like, I want the kind of power you want is to be able to kind of like connect people to the right people. Yeah. That's all I like doing. I, that's not all I like doing. I love doing that. It's like kind of building those bridges that you never see. You know, you never could see, you never, you never saw this coming. So it's just like making these connections happen, making them possible. Yeah. I like making possible connections. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. We did it. We did it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's good closing, like good closing. Yeah, thank you. Um, what, is there really anything else you want to talk about? No, that's it. No, that's it. No, that's that's it. I mean, I did. Yeah, I was like, I didn't tell you shit because I just found out my damn self. I told you I was interviewing. Yeah, I'll come get it. Thank you.